All right, so what we've been doing here is we've had a, uh, an incident where when we purchased this radome, it was involved in a um, nose gear collapse. So a lot of the bands that you see in the fiberglass were actually coming apart. So what we had to do was take it down to bare fiberglass and do a vacuum bag repair on it. So take it down to bare fiberglass, sand it all down, get it nice and smooth, do the repair, and now we're, we're ready to start reapplying the, um, the fillers and so forth to get it nice and smooth again. Um, the biggest thing is we do not want these, these breaks in the fiberglass to come back. So that's why we added the fiberglass. That's why we uh, went ahead and did it the right way. So hopefully we'll never have to redo it again. These radomes were actually constructed by a spiral wound. They were put on a mold and very, very thin layers. They were completely wrapped in fiberglass. And I'm not sure the thickness of it or how many strands there are, but it's a lot. But it's looking pretty good so far. We'll, uh, we'll have some updated pictures for you guys coming up. And as you can see, there was, oh, I counted at least seven or eight layers of paint that we had to sand through. Give you an interesting story on how this this radome actually came about. This was the actual first piece of, of this project that I actually owned. At the time, back in 2001, I owned a decorative concrete resurfacing business, which is exactly what this is on the floor. And we were working in a job in St. Charles, and a truck, a uh, scrap truck came by and I saw this radome sticking up and I'm like, holy crap, that's an F4E radome. Tracked him down, I ended up buying the radome off the driver for $50. So this was the very first piece that I actually owned of an F4. So this whole project, how this started was, um, whenever I was working for the 131st Fighter Wing, we had nine F4 fuselages that came down to Cannon Range that they were going to use at Cannon Range for a target. Well, I talked to our wing commander and I talked to him about doing the same concept for him as a recruiting tool. So we ended up, we pulled a complete fuselage from Cannon Range, brought it back up to St. Louis, and unfortunately, six months after we acquired it, we were announced that we were on the BRAC list. So that project never went anywhere, and in the course of looking for parts for that one, I came across this one, and I'm like, well, I'm gonna do this myself. And we'll have pictures on the the, uh, the video that show the condition of, of what it looked like whenever I purchased it. There was not a screw, not a plate, a panel on here. I acquired every single thing through um, different networks of, uh, I went out to Tucson to a place called uh, National Aircraft. We made three trips out there to acquire parts from some of the F-4 fuselages that, that they had uh, in their scrap pile. Um, some of the parts were actually, I guess, uh, donated by uh, the Air Force. So one of those parts was the gun muzzle. So, them not releasing any of the long nose phantoms, the long nose is the, the ones with the internal cannon, I was not able to find this. So, I knew that out at Holloman Air Force Base that they had a couple F4s that they were uh, using as parts birds, and I talked to the commander out there, and he graciously donated the, the gun muzzle to us. Um, the aircraft was originally a German F4F. Um, the serial number on it was 721156, and the German number was 3746. It was involved in a um, basically a catastrophic accident where the the engine caught on fire, and they deemed the airplane. Um, non-repairable. They sent the cockpit section out to Holloman Air Force Base for the 20th Fighter Squadron to use as a ground familiarization trainer for the pilots. Um, 
After they retired the German program, they sent the cockpit section to a local scrapyard in Almagorda, New Mexico, and that's where we purchased it from. Actually, we purchased it from Roger Johnson, who purchased it from the, uh, the actual scrapyard. And whenever I say scrapyard, it was scrap. They took everything out that they could possibly take off, and basically it was just a carcass whenever we started. So in 2003, we started a company called Little Pilots. Little Pilots was a, oh, just a, a way to get the public interested in aviation. What we did was we went to several air shows. Um, we've done lots and lots of parades, different public events to where we took this out, opened up the cockpits, and let kids get their picture taken inside the cockpit uh, with the hope of inspiring our youth in aviation. So after, oh, in 2019, we decided to go to another, uh, basically we decided a new chapter had to be formed. That's when we, we started the Gateway Youth Aeronautical Foundation. The purpose behind Gateway Youth Aeronautical Foundation is to inspire youth in the, the aviation career field whether it be maintainers, whether it be uh, pilots, air traffic controllers, you name it, we just want to get them involved in aviation some way, some shape, some form. So now what we're going to be able to do is take this to different STEM events, different uh, events around the Midwest, free of charge to where we can hopefully be that inspiring entity that starts their career in aviation.
the worst period. Marketing. I'd like to thank the guys over here for letting us uh, take care of the graphics on the plane. Looks great. Come check it out. <laughs> <laughs>